Hi there. Today, uh, we're into Proverbs chapter 10 in our summer in Proverbs. That's Proverbs chapter 10. As usual, pause the video, have a read, and we'll talk. So uh, we've, in, we've looked at Proverbs 1 to 9, which had a lot, as you remember, about uh, wisdom and uh, how good wisdom is. And now we begin uh, a, the long kind of central section of the book, which has lots of different sayings. And you'll say they kind of move around a bit. There's sayings that they're not kind of grouped thematically. Um, that's, what, that's how we like it. But in a sense, they come to us as uh, various sayings to help us live a wise life, help us live a life which fears the Lord uh, and which, uh, which knows God. And uh, so, uh, as usual, as you, as you know already, we're not going to go through all of these. There's how many was there? There's uh, 32 of them, 32 verses. Uh, we'll, we'll sort of, I'm going to pick out a couple which I noticed um, or which I, uh, which I, uh, which have been good for me. Um, and you may well have some yourself, as, as usual. Um, make some comments, especially if you're watching on Facebook, uh, and you'll be able to see for yourself uh, what's going on there. Um, so today, what I want to think about was uh, the words of the wise. Uh, and a couple of things in particular. So uh, there was uh, verse 11 and 12. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, uh, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers over all wrongs. Uh, and there, even in verse 11 and 12, there was a, um, a contrast there between the words of the wise and the words of the, uh, the fool and the wicked. Um, uh, the words of the wise... Uh, in a sense, give life. Uh, the words of the wise, uh, we're told there, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. They, uh, but, in, and in contrast, um, the mouth of the wicked, out of the mouth of the wicked comes violence. Um, uh, uh, wicked words uh, end up causing more grief and more violence and more disaster. Uh, but wise words uh, are there and they promote life and they promote um, uh, uh, peace. Uh, and they uh, allow people to uh, live lives which honour God. Uh, and you can see that kind of again uh, in verse 12, can't you? Hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers over all wrongs. Um, we can all think of ways in which when we are in that mood of, that, of getting really angry and, and, dare I say, hating, we generally uh, look, for the, look for the words which will hurt the most. Uh, uh, or when we're listening to others and we're not in a good mood, we look for the ways in which we can uh, interpret what they say uh, in the worst way possible. Uh, so to make it seem like they're being in the uh, to interpret what they say to make it seem like they're being as as nasty as possible when they may not actually be be being that nasty, but we're in that mood to do that. And hatred does that to us, doesn't it? Hatred stirs up that dissension among us, but love covers over all wrongs. Um, to uh, listen and to speak with love uh, means that we won't uh, interpret what others say to us in the worst possible light. We'll interpret it and we'll take it in the best possible way. To listen and speak with love means that we won't, um, uh, we'll be seeking as we speak to one another uh, not to find the words will hurt the most, but to find the words that will bring the most peace and find the words which, even when we need to rebuke or even when we need to correct, uh, are done in, in a loving way and a way that works for the good of others. Uh, words of hatred generally are for ourselves, aren't they? G words of hatred are generally um, for, generally make ourselves feel better. But words of love are spoken for the good of the other person. Uh, it's not for nothing that Jesus will say, uh, love one another is the, is the most important thing. And that's how people will know that we're his disciples, to love one another. And there's something else about the words of the wise here in chapter 10. Uh, it's over in, um, uh, uh, where was it? Um, I've lost it now. Um, oh, yes, verse 19. When words are many, sin is not absent, but he who holds his tongue is wise. Uh, and again, there's just some wisdom there, isn't there, that when people want to talk and talk and talk, and, and sometimes we realise when we're in trouble, we sort of, uh, we uh, can't stop talking to try and get ourselves out of trouble. Um, uh, but often the wisest course of action is to be silent. Um, 
Uh, there's another. It's not. It's not in the. It's not in the scriptures. But another proverb uh, was called the first law of holes is when you're in one, stop digging. Uh, and often when we uh, find ourselves in trouble, we think I'll get myself out of this hole by digging some more, and it just doesn't work, does it? And often the wisest course of action is to be silent, is to hold our tongue. Uh, and uh, you will find uh, lots more in there, particularly about the, the, the words of the wise um, uh, uh, and the way in which we speak about others and the way in which we speak the truth about others. Um, uh, but today I want us to, uh, I want to encourage us to be uh, speaking loving words and uh, not to be speaking words of hatred, which are usually selfish and for ourselves, but to be speaking words and listening to words uh, for, for, for the good of the person to whom we're speaking. Uh, that is, uh, they are words of the wise and not words of the fool. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this encouragement today uh, to speak words uh, uh, lovingly and to speak words for the good of others, uh, not to stir up dissension and, and conflict, uh, not to speak uh, words of hatred, which are often for our own to make ourselves feel better, but instead to speak words for the good of those uh, with whom we're speaking and because we love them. Uh, help us um, uh, to be wise in what we say, um, to uh, cover over wrongs with love, um, and to uh, love one another as Jesus commanded us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you next week.